Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week in honor of its 15th anniversary since it's released on August 25th, 2000, surprisingly enough, and it was a huge success at the box office, earning $90.4 million, and suddenly became a cult classic as of now. Yep, I'm talking about the teen comedy and cheerleading movie simply called Bring It On. It's a movie about a young teenager who just entered its senior year in high school who wants to be assigned as a cheer captain for her cheerleading squad and he later hired a, a new team member of the group only to discover that that her cheer routines are being stolen by an inner city high school and after finding out about this she decided to come up with something more fresh and original in order to, to team up against them for their national title and that's pretty much what the film's all about and when this movie came out it was actually very rare because most of the time all these cheerleading movies are just basically sex comedies and they've been using them ever since. And I know there was an 80s movie that was very obscured and, and criminally underrated as we speak. But it was an R-rated comedy called uh, Gimme an F. Yeah. It came out in 1984. It seems almost like, like it had the, uh, the originality of, of, of cheerleading. Yeah, because it was also a cheerleading competition as well. But this one is so rare that we hardly ever see any movies like this before. And, and to me, this seems more original than, than all the other cheerleading movies that we've seen. And plus, I mean, the movie did have a lot of sex-related material as well. Yeah, and so many of those homophobic jokes you know, involving gays and, and all that stuff. I mean, which is totally unnecessary. And I know they always... They show a lot of girls, you know, you know, strutting their stuff, you know, when they're doing all these dance moves, and and they they show a lot of, you know, sexual stuff too, you know, in the mix. But I guess that's just what the film was going to go for. <laughs> but you know, I I also like the cast in the movie. It, you know, it felt pretty interesting to see, uh, you know, talented stars like, you know, Kirsten Dunst. You know, who at the time was doing films like uh, Interview with a Vampire, Jumanji, and even Small Soldiers, and Elijah Dusku, who just started out in films like uh, True Lies, uh, went on to do the TV series Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Jesse Bradford, of course, was who just started out in the film uh, King of the Hill, just went on to do other material, so he was good. So, yeah, I... I I remember seeing the trailer for this movie when I went to go see uh, Scary Movie in theaters, and I I was actually curious to to check this movie out, and and I gotta admit I I had fun with it. You know, it's it's pretty rare. I was already in high school at the time when this movie came out, so <laughs> though I was still on vacation, but I was already ready for my uh, my second year in high school, and I had watched all these sports rallies where I basically see a lot of cheerleaders you know all the time and and sometimes I do watch some you know cheerleading competition on ESPN when when I was young so <laughs> it's always fun so I, I admit it so yeah um, and this movie came out on blu-ray since last year and since we waited so many years for this movie to finally get released um, it basically had a uh, a different transfer for for this movie. I mean, it looks pretty good for for Blu-ray. I mean, it's not not the best transfer that they ever came up with. Uh, seeing that the film came out on DVD since 2001, since I heard the DVD version was was very crisp, uh, had probably the best transfer for the that the movie had ever looked, and it had a lot of great extras too, despite it being this small. Yeah. The only thing that's missing on this Blu-ray was the trivia track and some DVD-ROM features which they should have included for this set. I mean, maybe maybe sort of BD-ROM, I guess, and maybe and add the trivia track in the mix. 
so they would have looked so much better. But otherwise, I, I think it looks okay, as you can see on the back. But, um, I don't know, I, I thought it was a fun movie. Um, sort of a guilty pleasure, too. Um, and I know they went on to do sequels that were direct-to-video. They only had four movies. And they also had a uh, stage musical, too, later on. And I have to admit, though, I have seen the sequels. The second movie sucked. Uh, the third movie was okay, because it had uh, Hayden Bateri in it. Uh, fourth one was decent. Yeah, that was the one with Ashley Benson. And the fifth one had Christina Milian. You know, I know she played a cheerleader before in the movie uh, Man of the House. So I, I guess this was sort of an interesting start for her. I mean, I know Hayden Bateri in, in the third movie, you know, that, that movie came out at the time when, when she was doing the TV show Heroes. Yeah. <laughs> save the cheerleader, save the earth. <laughs> yeah, I remember that line. Yeah, so it's interesting. So, I'm going to get right to the movie. It stars Kirsten Dunst, Elijah Dushku, Jesse Bradford, Gabrielle Union, Claire Kramer, Nicole Butterback, Rena Bell, Nathan West, Hunley Ritter, Natina Reed, Brandy Williams, yeah, from the group um, called uh, Black. Yeah. yeah. Lindsay Sloan, Sir Holmes Osborne, Sherry Husley, Cody McMains, and Ian Roberts. Yeah, the movie is written by Jessica Bendinger, who later went on to do films like Aquamarine and Stick It. Yeah, she directed that film, by the way. And it's directed by Peyton Reed, who later went on to direct movies such as Yes Man, Down With Love, and most recently, Ant-Man. The movie began centered on a perky high school student named Torn Shipman, who dreams about being a cheerleader all the time, because she always enjoyed cheerleading. She winds up um, starting her very first day of senior year at Rancho Carne High School. Her boyfriend, Aaron, who's played by Richard Hellman, has left for college. And the Toros, her cheerleading squad, is aiming for their sixth consecutive national title. Unfortunately, Big Red started to graduate from high school, so he left uh, Torrance to be elected to, to become the next cheer captain. So after that, you know, they started practicing for their next cheer routine, and this including the uh, the pyramid until all of a sudden their teammate Carver had fell and was completely injured and Sally no longer compete. So Torrance decided to replace her with a hot bad girl type of attitude who was a gymnast named Missy Pantone who just recently transfers to the school with her older brother Cliff which suddenly um, develops a a flirtation relationship with each other. You know, after you know she was about to ask Missy to join in with the group, since you know she left. And once uh, Missy came by just to watch uh, Torrance's uh, cheer routine with with the uh, with her squad, suddenly she wants up um, dropping out and explain to Torrance he recognized all the routines from the rival squad that they use for the for the competition that they compete against. So she drove Torrance all the way to Los Angeles where they went to East Compton High School to watch the Clovers perform their routines that are very identical to their own team as well. They meet the Clovers team captain Isis who confronts the two by learning that Big Red had attended those Clovers practices to videotape and steal their routines you know, just for their own. Yep, and that's when um, Torrance had revealed this a dark secret known as the Cheer Curse, where where this was at that moment where where when she was at the uh, cheerleading camp, uh, Big Red was assigned uh, Torrance to uh, pick up a spirit stick and give it to the 
the cheerleading squad. But then, if you actually drop the spirit stick, it would soon develop a curse. And that's what she explained to Missy about that. So then, later on, Isis had a form Torrance of her plans to defeat the Toros at the regional and national championships, which the team had never attended due to their economic hardship. So Torrance had told the Toros about the routines that's been stolen. So the team still votes in favors of using their current routine to win. Yeah, which they agree. But that's when it gets worse. When during their their next homecoming game for the Toros, you know, they they already started losing their football team. You know, while after they were doing all their cheer routines uh, in front of the entire crowd. Suddenly, Isis and her teammates had showed up just to perform the Toros routine right in front of the entire school completely. Humiliated them, the Toros have found out that they have no choice but to hire a professional choreographer to teach them how to do their new moves for, for cheerleading. So they had uh, a guy named Sparky Palastri. Yeah, this is one of those uh, those hilarious moments when they had to bring in a professional choreographer to come up with lines such as, I'm a choreographer. That's what I do. You are cheerleaders. Cheerleaders are dancers who've gone retarded. What you do is a tiny prophetic subset of dancing. I would attempt to turn your robotic routines into poetry written with the human body. Follow me or Paris sweater monkeys. <laughs> yeah. And I remember because there was that scene when they were trying to do the spirit fingers. <laughs> Wait, and he said, like, Enough! Yeah, I mean, once he breaks the chair and, and then he says, Enough! These aren't spirit fingers. These our spirit fingers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that, that was funny. I, I, I like Sparky in this one. Th this was just a clever attempt to use a choreographer with with a sense of humor. But anyway, they it was part of a suggestion for her boyfriend, Aaron. But at the regionals, uh, the team had scheduled immediately ahead of the tour was performing the exact routine that they had been practicing on but unfortunately they had no choice but to perform the very same routine that they've been doing for the past couple of years and it gets even worse because then Torrance uh, wants up speaking to the competition official and was and was told that Palestri had provided the routine to several other teams in California so she was warned that a new routine will be expected and she's already feeling very crushed by her failure to lead this, the team successfully considers to be quitting all the way throughout and even worse you know Aaron showed up and already realized that you know Big Red is a bitch for for stealing all the moves and and the fact that you know they've been practicing all this time you know, Aaron decided to take her home. You know, they just had a good night kiss, and yeah, you know, right in front of Cliff, who was already at the the driveway. You know, already sending her flowers and a uh, an audio cassette tape of, of the music that he just came up with. You know. So already her confidence was renewed by Cliff's encouragement, and she convinced her unhappy team to create an innovative um, new routine instead. Because you know, already she was listening to the music that Cliff came up with, and and I know she was doing her own cheering in in the bedroom, <laughs> you know, we're throwing up all these pom poms around. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So as a result of that, she decided to break up with Aaron, only to realize that you know she was falling in love with his roommate. Cliff still refused to forgive her for all the. The mess that causes that she made. Um, it prompts Torrance to get her dad's company to sponsor the Clovers, but Isis uh, unfortunately rejects the money. Yeah, she rips up the check right in front of her and gets her team to nationals by appearing to a talk show host, 
So during the finals, you know, after working up with the entire team, including all these other team cheerleaders around, the Toros wants up at second place, and the Clovers want up winning the national championship. Torrance and Isis have finally respect each other, and and having the once they won, and Cliff and Torrance have wound up sharing a romantic kiss together, and yep. And that's how the movie went, where it leads to the end credits where we saw basically outtakes from the movie, not to mention doing their own cheering and and singing the song, that classic 80s song that we never have forgotten, Tony Basil's Mickey. <laughs> yeah. Well, i got to say, 15 years later, it's still cheer-tastic. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, basically you just go around, you know, throwing up your pom poms and doing all these, um, a lot of great cheers, and of course throwing in all these acrobatic moves that they always learn to do, you know, such as flipping and splitting, you know, basket toss, you know, lifting girls up in the air, uh, as well as uh, <laughs> burpees and and several other. Uh, moves that they, they chose for cheerleading. So yeah, I mean, it's fun. I, I mean, I, I enjoy that. It's it's always interesting to see a very rare cheerleading movie like Bring It On. We basically just see a movie about what was it like if if all your cheer routines winds up being stolen from another group. And, and at the end, you know, no matter how, what happens, they're just going to sign up for the national championship and they'll be able to compete against all the other cheerleaders and no matter what happens you know they'll make up at the end they'll win and <laughs> they just feel you know as confident as ever and it's been said to others that cheerleading is a sport and it's true because people have been practicing they've been getting hurt by doing all these um, very uh, outrageous stunts and yes I mean it you know people do get injured a lot but no matter what happens, they will always practice. So in order for them to get better at it, and I, I understand because the film did have its problems. And and I'm gonna be fair to you. As good as the Clovers were, I mean, because they did all the routines that they worked on, and yeah, they worked so hard on doing them. They started out very rude too. I didn't like the girls uh, who was played by. Uh, an R&B group known as Black. I thought they were annoying, especially uh, Janelope. You know, she she was just coming up with all these uh, you know corny lines and everything right in front of uh, Torrance, all the rest of the squad. It's just, I mean, I I know. I mean, they they felt cheated and everything. But why didn't they just go after Big Red instead? Because after all, they all agree that Big Red is the traitor. And she was the one that started stealing all their moves in the first place. Yeah, because they should be mad at her instead. I mean, not, not Torrance. At least she agreed. And she's trying to make it up for it by apologizing to them. And even giving them a check to see if maybe they can compete against them if they're good at it. But no, they're just going to go around, you know, just tearing up the check. And be able to, you know, go on a talk show that they came from and the, and they figured you know maybe they'll they might be able to win the check uh, later on you know once they win so yeah I mean I just don't like their attitude sometimes and I, I understand how they felt but still it's just ridiculous and I already know that uh, the singer who played uh, Janelle P in the film already died yeah in a car crash and I'm going to be honest with you, I think the group uh, Black is basically a blanted ripoff of TLC. And yes, it, it's very similar because even Lisa Lopez, you know, aka Left Eye, was killed in the car accident too. So this is sort of like a strange connection between the two groups. But I, I, I like TLC better. Because I know I saw a music video uh, from Black. I know they did that famous song called Bring It All To Me and then 
they did a music video called Asked If, and it's on the Blu-ray and DVD uh, editions of Bring It On, where you basically see a poor guy trying to fall in love with one of the girls, but then he wants up uh, breaking any bones of his body once he fell into the stairs, and he wants up having a cast. He had a broken leg, and and started using all these clutches until later he wants up in a wheelchair and he keeps falling it's even worse because the girl uh, Natina Reed you know the singer actually wrote in the loser on on the cast yeah. it's just stupid I know no wonder because uh, this R&B group is just already faded to obscurity years later and we haven't heard from them ever since except for the the death of Retina Reed. So yeah, I, I didn't think they were that good in this movie, to be honest. But on the other hand, uh, I love Kirsten Dunst in the film. I thought she was very, uh, despite it being uh, perkish and everything, I, I thought she was very sweet as Torrance Shipman. I mean, she's been working so hard on, on all the cheer routines that she didn't even know that they'd been stolen. But they knew that no matter what happens, they're always going to come up with uh, different routines and uh, Elijah Dushku of course I agree she was pretty hot in this movie she she was uh, outstanding as uh, Missy Pantone and yeah because I know she was good and and so is uh, Jesse Bradford you know who played uh, her brother Cliff yeah real love her Gabrielle Union you know as Isis yeah I think it's okay to mention the name because it is a girl's name. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to mention that because it's just stupid. But we know it's the name of a girl, okay? Just to be safe. But she started out as basically just another bitch in the crowd, and and then in the end, you know, she made it up for what happened once they won the championship. So, and so they knew they found respect with each other, and and that's how the film was going to go for. Um, yeah, and I know, uh, because we already know how much of a bitch uh, Big Red was, and yeah, I know she's played by Lindsay Sloan. Uh, whole cast was great. I mean, yes, they even did use some professional cheerleaders to do all these acrobatic moves and all the stunts that they were doing and, you know, and, and all the cheers that they were coming up with. I mean, it's, it's cool that they even got to work in the background. Now, it's very well choreographed the way it was done yeah it was actually done by a choreographer named uh, Ann Fletcher who would soon become a director for hopefully for the upcoming uh, Enchanted sequel if that movie ever gets made I mean, who knows how that's going to turn out because I'm, I'm still looking forward to that yeah, I'm just saying though and of course who couldn't forget that moment was when Torn had a nightmare you know during the beginning of the movie was when she was doing her cheering along with her cheerleading squad, the Toros. This is where they sing that song. I'm sexy. I'm cute. I'm popular to beaut. I'm bitching. Great hair. The boys all love to stare. I want it. I'm hot. I am everything you're not. I'm pretty. I'm cool. I dominate the school. Who am I? Just guess. Guys want to touch my chest. I'm rocking. I smile. And many thinks I'm vile. I'm flying. I jump. You can look, but don't you hump. Whoo! I major. I war. I swear I'm not a whore. We cheer. We lead. We act like we're on speed. Hate us because we're beautiful. Well, we don't like you either. We're cheerleaders. We are cheerleaders. Roll call. <laughs> um, and yes, and this is when at the end of the cheer, you know, she wants a getting naked and then she started to cover her boobs and uh, and, and all of that uh, with with pom-poms <laughs> yeah right, right in front of the entire crowd <laughs> uh, I know I, I remember that moment so much but uh, yeah they she uh, did all the choreographed moves for, for the movie and it was just amazing having to see all of that in, in one film it's like watching all the cheerleading competition on ESPN. Because I know they play this all the time anyway. So that's cool. 
So yeah, it was fun. I, I thought it was one of the better teen movies that we had um, during the 2000s. It almost felt like it was made back in the 90s because it almost felt like a 90s movie. Um, there were some great moments here and some very sexual related material that they put in. I know they throw in all this homophobic jokes that they just mentioned in the beginning. That seems to turn uh, people off at times, but otherwise uh, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I mean, they did mention the word retarded in the film, so that's said by uh, the choreographer uh, Sp uh, Sparky. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but uh, I like the moments was when they were doing a cheer audition. They they actually were was hiring another uh, cheerleader to to join in on the group, and I know they did later on uh, before they hired uh, Missy. They, yeah, this is when they were playing the song uh, Cherry Pie by Warren. And yeah, I know she was stripping, and, and they just show her her bra and, and her short shorts. And, and she was just doing all that sexual dancing. Uh, yeah, right in front of the guy, and they just, <laughs> and he just fell out of the chair and, and just saying, Any questions? Uh, that. I know that that I know that that's what they were gonna go for, you know, for more of this sex uh, jokes that they went in, considering that this is a cheerleading team flick. Yeah, and of course you couldn't forget the the car wash scene. I mean, because you know they had to raise money just to hire the choreographer. Very well shot. I mean, I know they use a camcorder to shoot all these scenes where they have all the girls, you know, clean out all these uh, classic cars. You know, that was ready for a car wash. Yeah, for only 15 bucks still, so that was interesting. And surprisingly enough, the DVD did have uh, an 8mm home movies of, of that classic uh, car wash scene. So then we get to see more of that, along with the, the cast and crew. It almost felt like, you know, this was like one of those home movies that you see you know, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s or so. Yeah, because they do a lot of home movies with 8mm cameras. <laughs> Yeah, for a movie that was made in, in 2000, yeah, they, they really still had had the spirit to do so. <laughs> so I, I love that moment, too. If you love to, like, throw your pom-poms and, and you enjoy watching you know, cheerleaders do their stuff, then this is the movie for you, and I, I enjoyed it, too. Basically, as not only as a cheerleading movie, but as a teen flick as well. I'm, I mean, I was in high school. I enjoyed it, so, yeah. So, anyway... Um, I give Bring It On four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.